Okay. Or is it an update or? Yeah, I mean, we're looking at roads. We're on them, been on them. So, so there today. We're probably there for quite a few days. But you got the updated list then and you're, that everybody's satisfied with, you think, yeah. Bruce? Yeah, they're going to do that over and around out of that day. I didn't bring that, but they, yeah. they, they, they accepted that over and around. You guys will get four. Mm -hmm. Bob's well, working on the permits Bob's for them. working on all that and the design and permits. Oh, you're looking at all the smaller structures and stuff? Yes. Right? This was just nothing more than your big bridges. Right. Thanks. And what about the rural water lines? Do you have a map showing where those are all at? Chances are, my experience with rural water districts, it's nice to have a map that that's like I say, hell, I've run into water lines on the backside of watershed dams because they didn't want to go through the ditch. So right. 100 foot off the right of ways. And they're not where they say they are most of the yeah. time. Yeah. Well, be damn careful. it's most convenient. That's a right. Lot of That's what they did. Everybody's took to death to get a drink, so they let them put them wherever they want to go. Yeah. Which is what happened there. On, on the rural water lines, we are we do have a consulting engineer working on those. Um, Trying to get those GPS coordinates. Well, not just the GPS, but there's several crossings that we have to coordinate. So we hire that out. Uh, Snyder Associates out of uh, Omaha will be doing the crossings. And then as a part of that, they coordinate with the one calls and the things that need to happen along those lines. So make sure that we have all those mapped out when we put our, our, our final They're telling me together. they're thinking about hiring somebody. And I said, I don't. I mean, I don't think the water district needs to be spending money to hire somebody to. Yeah. I mean, this person that you have there then would, I guess my question is when, when, when all right, for say you go over the road, there's a water line probably alongside that road somewhere too. This heavy equipment got a good chance of breaking that water line if you don't be careful. They're only three to four, 40 inches deep. That's the best. You know, that's not real deep. You go over something pretty heavy. Yeah, I'd say three feet. You know what I mean? Yeah, we have a better better chance of, of likely hitting those during excavation of our collection lines than we do with the road okay. uh, roads um, themselves. So we're going to have to work very closely with them. If they okay. want to hire somebody, we'll end up having to work with them to pay for them to well, at least I mean, well, that's the thing. Yeah, I was going to say, I said, said guys don't have the money. Yes, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll work so with them. So Paul sure. Strothman, have you ever... Well, hired, that, yeah, that's actually Snyder Associates. So okay, that's I talked that. to one from Pont County, okay. which is our area, you know, and they were concerned about it. And I said, well, you and them and Paul or whoever from the NEMA. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll make sure. I'm not sure who the head of the board is down there. Paul okay. Strassman. Uh, Paul Strassman, out here, right out here, right at the office. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that called, which water district is that called? Nemaha. Nemaha. I don't know, Nemaha 3? 3. 3. Nemaha 3. Pots is number 3, too. Oh, Pots number 3, too. I'm not sure who's on the, I know Bob's on the board, but I'm not sure who is uh, Donna. the president of that, or the Donna chairman. Donna Ryan was. Then you got Nemaha 4 also, down there on the south end of the county. Okay. Round Goff. Yeah, so we'll have DMA four probably too then. I mean, likely. Um, is that the same Paul Strassman that would be for both, or would you no, no, would be he would so just totally be DMA three. Uh, I'm sure that we can figure out who we need to cut and cut okay. in DMA four then, if Paul knows. And then the pot three. Pot three. Okay. Chris taking care of that now. And still does. Yeah, but Chris in house is or field he's guy. the field guy, he's <coughs> the house boy. Okay. Because they were going to get a map, they're trying to get things in order too, to where they can. They've got a pretty good idea where most of their lines go naturally. But back when they did that in the 70s, they didn't have all this GPS stuff, and and so they're wanting to do that now. They want to coordinate when they find them. They like to mark them. Right. Like at our fences, it'll say water line with an arrow down. Well, like you said, is it three feet? Did that get moved a little bit? We're, we're going to have a lot of work to do there. Well, then look, what about fiber optics? That's part they of know one, where yeah. that's at more so. That's part of the one call system, so that, that, that has markers on it, that has uh, traceable uh, <coughs> yeah. okay. data. 
you know, those are the easy ones. The pipelines are, yeah. are easy They're to They're a little bit harder than the water lines, aren't they? Yeah, water lines, plastic water lines for rural water districts are always a challenge. Because so. one goes by my house, eight inch. Wow. Yeah, it's big. Right. You're on it. It's coming out of the way. Yeah, but I'm first one out of the wells. All right. So if the, if the goody stuff inside there is not right, I, we know about it. They don't list anything for Pike County 3 as far as who's on the board. Okay. We're going to try to work together today. Um, if I give them your contact information, yeah. though, they you could direct them to who they need to we'll, uh, we'll, if they call me. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's work on that today. Make sure that we're got those lines of communication open up. Um, regarding the roads and the, I know as of last week there was a distinction between a heavy haul route and a construction route. We're working on those today. Okay. Hopefully, we get with uh, the folks from the engineering your engineering firm coordinate from our trip team and, and make sure that there's a distinction between the two. Uh, the heavy haul routes are the ones that, you know, are going to carry the, the the lion's share of the, the big equipment across the county and then the, the construction routes are the ones that are going to have the dump trucks, yeah. the, the gravel trucks, the things like that. So uh, okay. we can differentiate where those go as opposed to, you know, the heavy haul. So we'll work with the, your engineer today to, to make sure that we understand those. Um, hope to have uh, something from the attorneys hopefully soon. I, I think the pen is in our hands right now. Uh, we got a draft, so I don't I don't know what, where the attorneys are at on that. Mm -hmm. So we'll look forward to seeing that sometime uh, and, and working with your engineer to finalize all the hall routes first. I did visit with a few people on uh, them hall routes, you know, that, that have put windmills in the last three or four years. And they all talked about the penalties for this, that we need to have that pretty well spelled out and pretty well set because one county said they collected $490,000 in penalty. Wow. Because they was on the wrong roads, you know, which I told them, I said, well, we're thinking about <coughs> letting them pay one time and then after that we're just going to ban them from the county. And she said, that would be a good idea. <laughs> they think, they said, because I want to tell you one thing, if they do it once, they're going to do it twice. That's right. And money means nothing to them. So anyway, we need to keep that in our mind when it comes to that part of this. The we talked about that in that contract. Yeah, we did. I know. We got it in the contract. Mm -hmm. County, when we talked to them that time, I said, that's where the, you got to put teeth into that deal. Yeah. Otherwise, they just don't stay on the route. Yeah. And uh, but but you'll need somebody to to it's follow like that few, back up. It's like, it's like a few of us on the road. Yeah. Okay. Is is that just regarding uh, regarding the heavy haul, or is that regarding uh, like dump trucks and those things? Because our biggest heartburn is that you know there may be a, this happened on another project of mine. We had another. Uh, transmission project going on or we had there was another hog shit right. going on and we got accused of running our our trucks which were trucks really for another project uh, on a county route and then then we had to sit there and argue you know whose truck is this and whose truck is that it really is tough to track normal what I would say dump trucks and those kind of things now obviously when you're talking about heavy haul routes yeah. Those are are very easily distinguishable. You sure. know, where those trucks are going and who they're heading to 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 go drop, um, and those are the ones that have got the heaviest hauls. What well, they was talking about rock trucks. Are they? Okay. What they was, yeah. the, what they collected their fees for. Those Sage County got a big thing. That that gets to be problematic because you know Dennis might have a, pro a rock project going on out there and he's hauling a truck yeah. and then the somebody from the public sees a truck and they say oh that's got to be from the wind farm and then they come in and start you know yeah. grinding the axe on you guys saying you know these guys are all over the place well actually it was a truck that was heading you know to a farm to drop rock off uh, in, in somebody's driveway well I mean I'm, that's the reason I brought it up is we need to probably be aware and and we'll get that handled i'm sure mm -hmm. yeah and i don't don't know if there's a way to mark trucks that are, are specific to our project or we know the trucks that are, are here coming in for our project how do we do that so that we don't get this confusion you know somebody's going to see a, a truck with sand in it you know hauling somewhere to, sure. to, to do this and they're going to say well immediately we're guilty and there's a ten thousand mm -hmm. dollar fine and i don't want to get into that argument yeah, that my, is. Thoughts, my thoughts on that will do just like what car deal is okay yeah 
got numbers in the trucks when you pull in. They know who they belong to. Yeah. Okay. Or mark them. Put a big just just deal them, on them. Just make sure we got windshield. Windshield, some kind of distinction paper and the trucks number, et cetera. Yeah. No, I think it's it's a good deal. That yeah. sounds fair. I mean, yeah. some we sort of deal trace. that. Trace we'll know who it is. We'll know what trucks numbers are. Well, and, and these people that I was talking to said it wasn't your company or the county, it was the local haulers. Independent haulers. It was the independent haulers is the one that said, we know the best roads, you ain't going to tell us what to do. Right. You know, well, and there's no money out of their pocket because they're going to make somebody else pay for it. But he said it's the independent haulers that they had all the trouble with. And that's likely what we'll end up with here is that, you know, we're trying to hire locals to do things and they, the locals tend to know where they can go and what they, where they, where they should go. Uh, you know, and it, it's hard to hold a truck driver to a certain route. You know, we can tell them all day long and next thing you know, we're paying a $10,000 fine for a guy that's well, just, just going like, down the wrong way. It's just like what you run into this morning on road construction, you know, if you, Truckers don't like to sit still for 15, 20 minutes. <laughs> you know. I think that's why them trucks went north and brake trucks. Yeah, <laughs> very positive. <laughs> yeah, they, they, bridges, Dennis, they, they know, know, jump behind me, they, <laughs> they know where to go. And going up over the hills. I, uh, I seen a couple the other day do the same thing, and I thought to myself, yeah, well. But. We're going to have to work hard on that, on those specific logistics of making sure trucks are marked accordingly that are, are associated with the project. Sure. That's going to be a little something different that we haven't done before, but again, you know, in the spirit of working closely, making sure. But I would make sure that the public knows that too, is that trucks are marked with this that are specific for the mm -hmm. Farm project. And that they see some other truck out there and they start calling you. It's like, hey, listen, do they have a wind farm marker on them or not? So, yeah. They're, the, they're thinking open that one at Bob Scobie's right south of the Four Mile Corner, and he's concerned about that. And you know, if that's a county line, and he's a, I don't want 100 trucks tearing up that road in front of his house. So, yep. I, I haven't talked to him in a couple of weeks. I don't know that they don't know what's going on, but you know, there he said they would be two and a half miles from Highway 75. Okay, so they went straight east. Be well, it's nothing that can't be handled. We'll get it yeah. out. Yeah. All right. Anything else? Bruce? No. Just Dennis? I'll get catch those guys before they leave. Yeah. Yeah, because I need to coordinate a meeting with them. More opportunities, right, Bruce? Yes. <laughs> that will bad. It was good meeting. We decided to do this good. and get this all route approved and everything. Do you guys have a problem if they need? setting a temporary bridge across the creek because there's no there's no way you can replace all four of them. I'd that assume that. that's what they was going to do anyway is put them in that's what they've done and put in temporary get it done get the project done and then put the bridge in <laughs> you know and and uh, it sounds like that'll probably be the case on most of them sure sure I just wanted to make sure everybody was on the same page on that the only thing you got to hope for is you don't get 12 inches of rain. I'm going to do that. If you do, you do. And you don't have a problem with doing that, do you? Of course, 12 inches of rain, I'd have a problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but as far as using them in temporary bridges. Oh, I think that we've talked about that in the office, and I didn't get a final say, but I think you'll be all right. Because uh, you'll have a load limit for those two. I mean, it's just like the big thing is if we're going to put them tubes in, we want them downstream. You know? So if you do get your big 12 inch rain and brush all plugs too, we don't take the bridge out, it's already there. So yeah, we want everything right. downstream of the river bridge, it's going yeah. to so good if you idea. float down to there or back up, you know, you're not going to tear your road up and take the bridge out. Sure. Okay. So. Any other wind discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, there will be no more <coughs> discussion in this office today. Do you guys have time for a separate question? Wind related? No, just uh, the comprehensive plan or zoning steps. Is there 
steps taking going that direction, or what's happening with that? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And it was alluded to in an email or two I got about being on the agenda. I think it's in these minutes that we had tasked Nancy with contacting KU and K-State. <coughs> I think Dennis and I both talked to them at our annual conference. And so we are currently seeking someone to help with the comprehensive plan. Okay. We could just take the only one we got, but I think we owe it to the county and to the taxpayers to fill out three or four different groups so that we ain't paying eighty thousand dollars for something that we could get done for twenty. You know, that's uh, and second place is, is we don't have funds budgeted for this, and I really don't want to go to jail for spending money I ain't got. <laughs> the, I think it was the the KU lady. Yeah. I think was the most encouraging to yeah. me when we suggested yeah, that so. to her. She said, "Yep, that's what we do." Yeah. She was so really. So I was, yeah. Her name she was really is Jennifer excited. Grog. Yep, and we got to send her information today. So. Right. So yes, we are working on it. K State hasn't really acted like they're that interested that I've talked to. But, but this gal from KU was really. So anticipate hearing from them and. Well, I'm assuming Nancy has already contacted those. Well, we need to talk to her. I, I have an idea she might have heard from her. I was going to call her on the way over, and I didn't get it done. But, yeah. And to also say this isn't going to happen overnight. We all know that. To, to, well, I think the one guy said they did it in 10 months, but it was hurried. So... Well, the other issue we're going to have is, is none of these people are within 30 miles. See, they're going to have to drive from either Junction City or Lawrence or, you know, they're going to have to drive 70, 80 miles. So when they come, they're going to want to have specific things lined up and meetings when they have their strategic meetings around, you know, to get things in order. They just can't drive up here, you know. Uh, it costs too much for them, I suppose. I don't know how well, they do it. But. Some ideas about uh, folks who agreed to be on this steering committee, and some of them, one guy mentioned they had a couple from each geographic area, some didn't. Uh, I can tell you that a pet peeve of mine is somebody agreeing to be on a board and then never attend a meeting. Yep. Very so much. So. It, it, going to have to be, in my opinion, somebody's passionate to attend meetings. And I think most of those, I think it sounds like, are they're scheduled from the get-go for a year ahead of time. Here's when our meetings are. And can you be there? Now, we all know that grandma dies and so forth and so on. <coughs> Anyhow, it's a work in progress. Dan, or what? anything else? Sure. 